In this presentation, a malunion of the proximal femur will be corrected by means of a valgization and extension osteotomy. The osteotomy will then be fixed with the 120 degree angled blade plate. The bone model and the x-rays of this malunited proximal femur are reviewed. To plan the osteotomy, tracing paper is placed over the x-rays of the malunited proximal femur and the contours of the bone are traced in both planes. Now, the center line of the femur shaft axis is determined by measuring the width of the femur at two different levels. At each level, the midpoint of the width is marked and a ruler is used to draw a straight line that intersects the midpoints. A goniometer is used to determine the center of the femoral head. One or two measurements of the width of the femoral neck are made. A straight line that includes the center of the femoral head and the midpoint of the width of the femoral neck is drawn with a ruler. An alternative technique is to draw a straight line from the center of the femoral head to the top of the greater trochanter. At the point where the two lines intersect, a goniometer is used to measure the angle between them. By comparing the angle of the injured side to the angle on the uninjured side, the necessary angle of corrective valgization is determined. Using the same technique, a tracing is made in the lateral view to determine the center lines of the femoral shaft and femoral neck axis. Since the axis in the lateral view is practically a straight line, an X-ray and tracing from the uninjured side is not needed. The deviation from the straight line is measured to establish the necessary angle of correction in the second plane. The degree of malalignment is analyzed and shows a varus deformity of 30 degrees in the AP plane and a flexion deformity of 20 degrees in the lateral plane. Now, a correction osteotomy can be simulated on the tracing paper, as it will be done later in surgery. Here, in this visualization, the position of the K-wires that will be inserted and the planes of the osteotomy cuts are shown. The patient is positioned supine on a radiolucent OR table with the uninjured leg placed in a leg rest in flexion and abduction to allow for an image intensifier to be placed between the legs. The surgical approach is a standard anterolateral approach to the proximal femur through a straight lateral incision. After the skin is opened and the subcutaneous tissue incised, the fascia lata is opened lengthwise. The vastus lateralis muscle, which is carefully detached at the insertion in an L shape, is exposed. A K wire is inserted just below the tip of the greater trochanter, aiming into the center of the femoral head. In the axial view, the window for the seating chisel in the center of the femoral neck is determined. The window is located approximately 3.5 cm below the tip of the greater trochanter. A second K wire is inserted into the trochanter, proximal to the site of the seating chisel window in the anterior portion of the femur. This K wire should be parallel to the first in the axial view. A third K-wire is inserted parallel and posterior to the second K-wire at an angle of 20 degrees in the lateral view, while a triangular positioning plate is used to help align the K-wire at a 70 degree angle to the vertical axis of the shaft of the femur. In the AP plane, the second and third K-wires show the correction angle of 30 degrees relative to the first K-wire. The 130 degree triple drill guide is slid down the second and third K wires and secured with an additional K wire. The lateral cortex is perforated with a 4.5 mm drill bit to a depth of 60 mm. Be careful not to penetrate the femoral neck. The triple drill guide and the first three K-wires are now removed. The drill holes are enlarged with the router to create the opening for the seating chisel. The seating chisel is inserted to a depth of 60 mm with a hammer. The slotted hammer is used to control the rotation of the seating chisel. A K-wire is inserted 2 centimeters below the position of the seating chisel. 
This will be the plane of the proximal osteotomy cut. Another K-wire is inserted from distal towards the medial cortex using the triangular positioning plate to help align it to the 30 degree angle of correction relative to the previously inserted K-wire in the AP plane. The proximal osteotomy cut is made using the K-wire as a guide. The second osteotomy cut is made perpendicular to the axis of the femoral shaft. The correction angle between the first and second osteotomy cuts is achieved. After the osteotomized bone wedge has been removed, the 120 degree angled blade plate is inserted, leaving it laterally one centimeter proud of the bone. The two oblique osteotomy surfaces are brought together, leaving a three to five millimeter gap between the lateral cortex and the plate at the distal osteotomy cut. A neutral 4.5 mm monocortical screw is inserted in the distal plate hole as a temporary measure. A screw hole is now prepared through the proximal plate hole using the yellow eccentric DCP drill guide. As the plate has previously been left about 1 cm proud of the bone, when the screw is inserted and tightened, the plate is drawn to the bone, leading to closure of the gap and compression across the osteotomy. The distal monocortical screw is now replaced by a bicortical screw in the neutral position. The tightness of the proximal screw is checked. The completed osteotomy shows the successful correction of the proximal femur.